Hi everyone, I'm Miss Benita, and I live and teach in Seattle, Washington. And like you, I'm at home right now. These are my two cats, Ruby and Claude. They are studying their local ecosystem. And if you're new to these videos, welcome. This unit is called Ecosystem Restoration. We have been building our learning to help us answer this question. How do organisms in an ecosystem get the matter and energy they need to grow and thrive? We'll be working through packet pages 13 through 16. And if you have paper around your house, you can just use that instead. We've been working through this question, how do animals grow? Let's take a look and review from lesson five. What did we learn? We learned that, anim that animals use some food molecules to release energy for movement and growth. And we learned that animals grow by changing food molecules into body molecules that can build their bodies. All right, so in this lesson, lesson six, we're going to look at the role of food in an ecosystem. And the purpose of this lesson is to build on what we have been learning and apply it to thinking about matter as it flows in an ecosystem. There are three activities in this video. We'll start with the first one, showing the flow of matter. Remember what matter is? It's the stuff that things are made of. Everything is made of matter. Now, you'll get a chance to show your thinking about where food matter comes from in an ecosystem. You'll also think about how the amount of food matter available to different organisms in an ecosystem might affect their health. Turn to page 13 in your packet. On this page, we have a very simple representation of an ecosystem with three organisms, grass, zebras, and cheetahs and you have a table up here. This is a menu of different conditions you can choose for the organisms. Normal, which is healthy, less unhealthy, not in an ecosystem, or a lot more in a very healthy ecosystem. You can choose for each of the different organisms. And over here, we have the amount of food matter you can show what happens to the amount of food matter in the ecosystem according to the condition you've chosen for the ecosystem. Now on page 13, there's also a table that might help you organize your thinking. You can use it or you can organize your thinking however it makes sense to, to you. Let's try, let's try with an example. If we said that the grass was unhealthy, what would that do to, to, to the zebras? We would have unhealthy grass. So there would be less food matter for the zebras. And if there's less food matter for the zebras, how would that affect the cheetahs? Well, there would be less food matter for the cheetahs as well. See how everything's connected? The goal here is to show matter in the ecosystem when cheetahs are healthy. So pause the video and work through different conditions in the ecosystem. And then your last one should be have healthy conditions for the cheetah. Which food matter cards did you place in the boxes? Why did you place them the way you did? What are you thinking about? When you're done with that, we'll turn to page 14 in your packet. After you practice showing what happens when the cheetahs are healthy, respond to the questions below. Make sure you pause the, the video so you can uh, look through this sheet and I'll read it to you. Refer to your completed healthy ecosystem table as you answer the questions below. The goal is to show matter in the ecosystem when the cheetahs are healthy. Make a drawing if it helps you explain your thinking. Label your drawing. You know, I recommend that you always draw before you write. It's super helpful. See you in a bit. All right, welcome back. Now here's a drawing that I've made. Let me walk you through it a bit. I started with cheetahs. Cheetahs were on my mind. 
cheetahs are healthy because they have enough to eat. They have zebra matter to eat, right? The zebras are healthy because they have enough healthy grass matter to eat. And there's enough healthy grass matter. When the grass is healthy, the zebras have enough to eat. The zebras are healthy and thriving. There are enough zebras in the ecosystem to feed the cheetahs, and that's why they are healthy. I wonder what you drew. Let's take a look at the first question. What happens to the grass molecules once they are eaten by the zebra? Then I thought, oh, grass molecules. Maybe I should add more to my drawing. So I wanted to add that the grass is healthy because there's enough sunlight and rain for the grass. And in turn, that the, since the grass is healthy, the zebras will be healthy. And when the zebras are healthy, the cheetahs are healthy. That really helped my thinking. So the grass molecules turn into zebra body molecules or are released as energy so the zebra can move and grow. So the use of body molecules and energy. Let me put that right there. So the next question, what happens to the zebra molecules once they are eaten by the cheetah? What did you, how did you answer that one? The zebra molecules turn into cheetah body molecules or are released as energy so the cheetah can move and grow. Very similar to the first question, right? We're gonna add that right there. All right, moving on to the second activity, writing about rainforest animals. Do a lot of writing in this one. Make sure you take breaks. As ecologists working for natural resource rescue, let's think about how what we have learned applies to the jaguars and sloths in the rainforest project area. Let's turn to page 15 in our packets. Let's review the directions. It says, read the question below. Write a paragraph that answers the question. Make sure you explain how both the jaguars and the sloths grow and thrive. Include what you know about molecules and energy in your explanation. The question is, how do the animals in the rainforest ecosystem grow and thrive? Now, I know there's a lot of blank lines here, and that always makes me pause a bit. So I return to my uh, set of directions, and what is really helpful is that it helps me remember what I need to include. That's in three and four. Three says, make sure you explain how both the jaguars and sloths grow and thrive. So I know I need to include them. And then it says, include what you know about molecules and energy in your explanation. So I need to make sure that I use these words. So pause the video and go ahead and make a rough draft of what of, of your answer and explanation to the question, how do the animals in the room rainforest ecosystem grow and thrive. See you in a bit. All right, welcome back. We're explaining how the animals in the rainforest ecosystem grow and thrive. So have your, uh, have your writing out and let's do some review and comparisons, okay? Organisms are made of matter and they grow when they add new molecules to their bodies. Did you have something similar to that? Let's add that over here. What else? Animals eat the body matter of other animals and plants to get food molecules. Okay, we'll put that over here. What else? Organisms change some food molecules into molecules to build their bodies and use some food molecules to get energy. All right, you know that, put that over here. And we learned from the ecosystem restoration simulation that the rabbits get food matter from the plants they eat. The rabbits then use some of it to build body matter and release some as energy. So we learned all that. We also used our evidence. 
So I'm gonna go back up here and see if I followed my directions. So did I talk about molecules and energy? Let's see, Mo blue molecules are here, energy is here, good, you got that one. And then did I talk about how both the jaguars and the sloths grow and thrive? You know, I didn't do that. I wonder how I could rewrite some of this so that I include those words. Maybe I could say that the jaguars and sloths grow and thrive because they get enough body molecules from the food they eat from uh, the plants and animals in their ecosystem. Sound good? Thanks. Now, what we just did is we went through and knitted our ideas together or zipped them all up. All right, so we've read about and observed many different examples of ecosystems. Based on all that you have learned in the last few lessons, what new ideas do you have about what an ecosystem is? That's a big question. Let's take it step by step. Let's go back, way back to lesson two, and let's do a lesson two review. We broke this word apart to uh, take a look at it, and uh, we came up with this part here, eco, is Greek for house. And system, you can think of as individual pieces that when they're brought together, they make a whole. And the definition back in lesson two was a place where animals and plants live together in their environment. And we've been using the word ecosystem throughout this whole unit. So now we're going to deepen that understanding by saying that an ecosystem is a community of organisms together with this environment. Think about your community. How does your community work together? All right. A system is a group of parts that work together. Each part plays a role. What are some of the parts of the Costa Rican rainforest system? Take a look at those. We identify the Cecropia trees, millipede, three-toed sloth, soil, and jaguar, which in Spanish is jaguare. We identify that these were parts of the Costa Rican rainforest system. What about other parts of the system? Yes, we have rocks, we have water, we have air. All of these are part of the ecosystem as well. The parts of an ecosystem include all the organisms as well as all the living things in the environment. Now, if your family culture has different ways of defining living and non-living things, this would be another opportunity for you to talk to your family about that. Throughout this unit, we'll discover the roles of the different parts of ecosystems, as well as what can happen if something happens to one of the parts. All right, our last activity for today is reading for information. And we're gonna go back to our book and finish reading it. We know that animals eat to get the food molecules they need. We are now going to investigate this question. Where do food molecules in an ecosystem come from? As you read about what eats what in different ecosystems, think about where all the food molecules for that ecosystem come from. We're gonna to turn to pages 12 through 19, and think about that. Where do the food molecules in an ecosystem come from? So pause the video and read through those pages. Think about that question, and I'll see you in a bit. Hi, welcome back. Let's turn to page 17. Notice that this food web includes different organisms. We have plants, we have animals, and microbes that are too small to see. Take a closer look at this food web 
and think again about where the food molecules in the ecosystem came from. Also be thinking, what do the arrows represent? If you have a family member available, this would be an excellent opportunity to practice shared listening. So this is in your packet on page 16, but I will read each of the different steps. Let's start with step one. Partner A, that could be you, reads the question and shares for one minute while partner B listens. That could be a family member. In step two, partner B restates what they heard partner A say. Partner A can correct misstatements if necessary, but not add any new information. Then you want to switch roles for the next question. Partner B will share and partner A will listen and then restate partner B's ideas. My head's in the way here, sorry about that. Okay, start with algae and follow the arrows up to the alligator. This is for shared listening question number one. What eats what in this ecosystem? There's space on your packet to write down your response or just share it with your family member that's working with you. Shared question number two is start with the algae again, but this time find a different way up to the alligator. What eats what in this ecosystem? This is the Everglades swamp ecosystem. What are some of the different ways you got from the algae to the alligator in this food web? Jot that down. A food web shows many different ways that organisms get food molecules. Now, where does the alligator get its food molecules? Did you do something like this? through many other organisms that eat one another. Let's trace that path. Here's one, right? The marsh grass is eaten by the rabbit, the rabbit is eaten by the alligator. Again, you can go marsh grass that is eaten by the carp and the alligator eats the fish that are in the water. And then here's another one, right? The microscopic algae are eaten by the mosquito larvae and the mosquito larvae are eaten by the frog, and the frog is eaten by the raccoon, and alligators do eat raccoons. I'm sure you found other ways there, right? All right, it's a wrap. Let's see all the things that we've done today. Put my book away. We looked at an ecosystem with healthy conditions where there's enough food molecules to turn into body molecules. We expanded our thinking that an ecosystem is a community of organisms working together with this environment. And from the reading, we learned that a food web shows many different ways that organisms get molecules. Thank you for joining me today. And until I see you next time, I'd like you to think about the matter that cycles through an ecosystem and from where can you trace its food molecules. Until then, have a good one. Bye.